Hey guys, we're live from the Pritchett House going over week two in our Secrets of the Vine study. So right now we're on page 21. Okay, week two is going over discipline. Okay, now the first thing is titled um, How God Moves You from Barren to Bountiful. Okay, and the very, very first question on there of the book, everybody's going to have a different answer. So I'm going to share my answer with you guys. Number one, the first answer is, what do I believe about God's involvement in my life? What do I believe about God's involvement in my life? Here's my answer. I believe that God loves me so much that he has given me free will, in which I can get myself into trouble sometimes with my sin nature, and let's be realistic, by my sin by choice. But I believe God wants us to sacrifice and have self-control and rise above the human standard of sin. I believe he has me in his hands after I have accepted his son, Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, and I do believe he intercedes for me. And through the Holy Spirit, he continues to teach me. If you were to discover that some of the distress in your life was the results from God's discipline because of your disobedience, because of your sin, would you be surprised? And how would that make you feel? So these are the, some of the questions that you need to ask yourself, and you need to ask, you need to answer that question yourself. You know, what do you believe about God's involvement in your life? What do you, what do you think that looks like? Uh, my answer is going to be different from your answer. Your answer is going to be different from mine. Um, there is again a inventory self checklist, you know, that we have, and you get to you get to uh, score yourself. And again, like I mentioned in the past, I do very well on these when we get to test ourselves and grade ourselves. Um, but it doesn't mean you're doing that great in, in, in life, right? Uh, we need to mean to be honest with ourselves, and um, you know, sometimes it's not your your grade here is not reflective of what you're actually doing, you know. In, in, in real life. So we're going to go on to number two. Number two says, how does God respond when my life is unproductive? How does God respond when my life is unproductive? We're going to read John 15, 2. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, so that it will be even more fruitful. Okay, so he does away with the branches that don't produce fruit, and he prunes the ones that, that do. So that comparison is to the uh, to the grapevine, and then we went over that last chapter about what does it mean to bear fruit, and what that looks like. When a Christian becomes dirty and unproductive because of sin, God acts to lift him up and clean him off. The Bible calls this process discipline, and that's what this chapter is about. God intervenes through process of discipline to convince us to stop sinning and begin bearing fruit again. So the metaphor is, you know, the branches are thrown away. In Scripture, they're thrown away and thrown into the fire. It's not to be made um, literally where, you know, if you don't bear fruit, then you're going to be thrown away and you're going to be thrown into a fire. It, it means that he intervenes for you, picks you up and cleans you off, prunes you and, and getting you to produce fruit again, getting you back to a position where you can, you can bear fruit. Okay, we're going to read from Proverbs 13, 24, 24. Whoever spares the rod hates their children, but the one who loves their children is careful to discipline them. Okay. So by reading that, what does this tell us about God and why he disciplines us? What do, you, what do you think now when you look back on your childhood and you think about your earthly mother and father, the way that they used to correct you and the way they used to punish you and the way that they disciplined you? What do you think now as an adult when you look back at that? Do you think that was good? Do you think it was bad? Was it to harm you? Was it to make you a better person? I think now that maybe when we were kids... We didn't think it was fair. We thought it was, you know, bad for our parents to do that. But 
you know, now as adults, we look back and we say, you know, that's because they loved us. We turned out better. You know, they gave us discipline. Um, so, you know, think about if your earthly and mother father discipline you because they love you. Think about how much more God loves us. So, of course, he is going to discipline us. Number three in the book. What does God do when he disciplines me? What does he do? We're going to read from Matthew 18, 15 through 17. If your brother or sister sins, and, and this is from a perspective to your brothers and sisters in church, but if your brother or sister sins, go and point out their faults. Just between the two of you, if they listen to you, you have won them over. But if they will not listen, take one or two others along so that every matter may be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. If they still refuse to listen, tell it to the church. And if they refuse to listen, even to the church, treat them as you would a pagan or a tax collector. So a couple things here. This is talking about bringing attention, to, you know, bringing uh, sin to attention to a fellow brother or sister. Uh, this can be very, very um, touchy. Um, you know, the first thing that comes to mind is our, our sinful nature, and then we have to uh, remember that. Be careful about telling your neighbor or your sister or your brother about a speck in their eye when you have a log in yours. You know, that's that's the scripture that tells us. So we we have to make sure that uh, that we're not judging and and, and and making those accusations when ourselves. Are, are doing bad things. But this is talking about coming along your sister or brother and helping them and, and, and pointing out to them their sins. Okay? We also, you want to make sure you give good, you get good godly counsel before you approach your brother and sister and you make sure you do it delicately. Um, but scripture tells us that we are to do so. So, um, there's three levels of God's discipline. Rebuke, which is a verbal warning. Chasten, which includes anxiety, frustration, and distress, which we've all been there, and scourging, which is extreme physical pain. But let's talk about maybe some examples of the rebuking. You know, how does, how does God give us a verbal warning? If we're, um, you know, we don't hear from God audibly all the time, what would be a verbal warning, you know? Uh, it can be through a divine appointment. It can be through a dream. You know, it can be through another Christian that is sharing information with you. It could be a pastor. It could be, you know, at, at your church. Uh, there's so many different ways that, that he can talk to us without audibly talking. Um, chasing, you know, anxiety, frustration, distress. I think a lot of us, you know, find ourselves in that area uh, when we're in sin and we're being disciplined by God, whether we know it or not. The third level uh, is extreme physical pain. Now, I know a lot of us don't like to think that, wow, you know, would God really want me to have extreme physical pain? Would God want me to have physical pain? Would God scorch me? You know, you may be asking yourself that. Um, well, I mean, let's look back in Scripture, you know. If you remember the, the time when Noah, you know, what did God do? He wiped out the whole earth, except Noah and his family and Adam, you know. So we are, we, we, we definitely uh, need to fear our God. We need to fear our Lord, and, and he is to discipline us. Uh, we're going to look at an example um, of scourging uh, here in 1 Corinthians 11, 27 through 31. So then, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat the bread and drink from the cup. For those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ, eat and drink judgment on themselves. That is why many among you are weak and sick, and a number of you have fallen asleep. But if we were more discerning with regards to ourselves, we would not come under such judgment. Fallen asleep. Yeah, you know, I, I, spiritually, how many of us have fallen asleep? You know, I'm guilty. You know, I'm guilty of of having at times in my life where, you know, yeah, fall. I've spiritually fallen asleep. You know, we have to wake. We have to wake. We have to wake up, 
and make sure that we don't put ourselves subject to th these different levels of discipline, okay? Reflect back, and can you identify the three levels of discipline you were maybe in, you know, something that happened, pain that was in your life, or maybe you're in now, okay? Um, you know, being a Christian, there was never anywhere in the scripture that tells us that things are going to be smooth riding. You know, it actually tells us just the opposite. Um, the light at the end of the tunnel, I, mean, I made a joke about this before, but the light at the end of the tunnel may be another train coming. You know, so we have to, we have to guard ourselves and put the armor of God on, uh, the armor of God on. Let's talk about the Bible. Who else in the Bible experienced God's discipline? How about Saul? Okay. Saul was replaced as king. Remember? You know, Saul did not listen and he was told to kill every, you know, kill everybody in that town and, and don't leave, you know, any animals. And he kept some spoils for him and his soldiers, you know. God left him. God was no longer with him. And he was replaced by David. Uh, he disciplined Saul. Jacob. Jacob was a cheater and a deceiver. And then he got caught up with his with his uh, with an uncle, and then he was deceived. You know, and he was uh, he had uh, worked, you know, seven years or something like that to, to marry Rachel, his wife, and then was deceived and was offered another wife. Uh, so he got some of his own medicine. Jonah. Jonah, we all know the story of Jonah. You know, uh, he was told by God to go to Nineveh, the city of Nineveh, to, to preach the gospel. And he didn't want to go. He didn't think the people deserved it, you know. He thought there were, there were, there were slime balls, you know, and he didn't think that they deserved um, the, good, the good word, the, the message. And, he, you know, he decided he, he went that way. Well, he got punished. He was also disciplined. Um... And then we touched, we touched on, you know, back to what happened in Noah's day, you know. He, he, he wiped out the whole world. How can it turn around, though, if we respond to God's discipline and repent and start bearing fruit again? So let's talk about how we can turn it around if we're disciplined, right? Because do you remember, as your earthly father and mother disciplined you, typically it took you a little time to get over your spanking or your punishment or your grounding or whatever, you know. And then the next day, you know, you were... You were, you were you're doing good again, right? So let's talk about how we can turn that around and repent and get back to bearing fruit. Let's talk about these people that were met with, with grace. Simon Peter he denied Jesus. After Jesus' resurrection, came back and looked for, looked for him, talked to him. Elijah. Elijah was, you know, fled. He was scared for his life. He prayed to die. You know? And he was taken to heaven without physical death. You know. Chariot of fire came down to pick Elijah up. That's not turning it around. I don't know what it is. Thomas. Thomas in the Bible doubted the resurrection of Jesus. You know, Jesus came and showed himself directly to Thomas. Moving on to number five. How can we respond wrongly to God's discipline? How can we respond, respond wrongly to God's discipline? Do not become bitter. Do not lose heart. Do not question why he is allowing this to happen to you. You remember the story of Job. But what is he trying to teach you? That's the question. What, what is he trying to teach me? And I know that's hard for us sometimes. And I've done that before. You know, I said, Lord, whatever, you know, I'm going through right now, I, do, I obviously deserve it. Te show me, the, show me the, the lesson at the end of the day. What, what am I supposed to take away from this? Uh, but it's very easy to get into that. The, the sinful nature of us just getting stuck in a rut, becoming bitter and becoming, you know, to lose heart. And, you know, he doesn't want us to do that. He wants us to stay strong. Number six, what are the positive ways we should respond to God's discipline? Well, the, the obvious and number one would be submit to God. Submit to God and submit to his discipline. Repent of your sins, turn away from it, and move forward. Find the lesson. And learn from it. Repent of the sin and change your habits. Change what you're doing that's causing for you to be, uh, you know, to, for you to be disciplined. It's just like your earthly mother and father. When you got in trouble for something and they were disciplining you, well, you better figure it out, you know, because if you do it the same thing the next day or the day after, you're going to keep getting spankings or keep getting disciplined. So the same thing with our godly father. We need to we need to stop, repent, turn around. And learn what's right and move forward.
Number seven. What can keep me from responding positively to God's discipline? We're going to read Romans 6, 11 through 12. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Jesus Christ. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its evil desires. What does that mean? Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body that you obey its evil desires. The lies of the enemy. Do not buy into the lies of the enemy. Okay? They're, the enemy is going to keep telling you lies. And what happens when you buy into those lies and it becomes part of you, then you're in bondage and you stay there and you can't get away. There is a page 33 in the book that talks about a new start. I want you guys to read over that and, um, and sign it and date it there. And that'll be... Um, you know, a something tangible for my new start in a life of repentance. Okay? And I'm going to close with the Bible scripture, Romans 8.28. We know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. So yes, God is going to discipline you. God loves you. God's your father. We're going to close in prayer. Dear Lord, thank you so much for this lesson, Lord, that you've given uh, Lord, thank you for everybody here that's allowed to to freely talk about you and learn about you and read your word, Lord, to be able to share with each other. Lord, we just ask you to be with everybody that's watching this video, Lord, to be able to help their help them, their families, uh, all the sickness that's around, Lord. You know everybody's wants and needs, Lord. Please just be with everybody and and help everybody, Lord, that, that needs your help. We lift you up, Lord, in your son Jesus' name. Amen. We'll see you next time.